Jaguar's third relaunch in four decades has failed. The hopes of everyone who holds affection for the brand, and there's loads of us, me included, are now pinned on relaunch number four. What's happening to Jaguar? We like to think of the company as a big car brand, especially in the UK. But last year, the Jaguar XF was outsold by the Jeep Wrangler in Britain. The small Jaguar XE, Jaguar's mass market answer to the BMW 3 Series, was outsold by the bigger, more expensive, and in no way mass market, Mercedes S-Class. Neither of Jaguar's sports saloons sold over a thousand models in the UK. I'm sorry, but that officially puts you into niche territory. And globally, it's just as bad. Jaguar sold 14,000 cars in the last three months of 2021, according to their own figures. To put that into perspective, it was the worst quarter for the brand since 2013. And 2013 is significant because that's when the management team at Jaguar Land Rover were still busily laying the groundwork for the dream of becoming Britain's BMW with the goal of a million sales a year. Last time I checked, 14,000 is about a million short of a million. Back in 2013, the two saloons, the XE and the XF, were only on the road as prototypes, and the E-Pace and F-Pace SUVs only existed on computer or in clay in the design studio. What that means, basically, is that Jaguar's third relaunch in four decades has failed. The hopes of everybody who holds affection for the company, and there's loads of us, me included, are now pinned on relaunch number four, when they rip it all up and go entirely electric. But before we look into Jaguar's future, let's remind ourselves why Jaguar still exists. Let's take it back to the late 50s and early 60s when the brand's founder, Sir William Lyons, presided over era-defining machines like the 1959 Mark II, the 1961 E-Type, and the 1968 XJ. Those, plus the early sports cars, the C-Types, the D-Types, and the cool variants like the XJ Coupe, with the DNA for the Jaguar brand. They signified the effortless cool and glamour that every successive new owner has tried to recapture. Very long story cut short. In the 1980s, British industrialist Sir John Egan wrestled the company out of the dead hands of British Leyland for a brief moment of glory, and that culminated in the XJ220 supercar before they seduced Ford into buying the company for $2.5 billion in 1990. That led to travesties like the X-Type, which was based on a Mondeo and other corporate crimes against Jaguar's past designs. Fast forward a bit more because needless to say, Ford's relaunch failed. Current owners, Tata, an Indian company, bought Jaguar Land Rover in 2008 for $2.3 billion, less than what Ford paid 18 years earlier, and they set about creating a premium powerhouse. The new boss, Ralph Spieth came from BMW, and he knew all about what customers wanted from a Jaguar. It looked to me like he was trying to turn Jaguar into a proper rival for BMW. He signed off a rear-wheel drive bias platform called D7 that cost 1.5 billion pounds and made wide use of lightweight aluminium to give Jaguar's cars the handling performance that BMW customers had come to expect. Jaguar head of design, Ian Callum, created svelte, understated bodies for both the XE and the XF, the XC was described as arguably the most important car in Jaguar's history when it launched in 2014. They drove well as well, they did, except the designs were maybe a bit too understated. And today, when you're looking at an XF or an XC, instead of going, ooh, an English BMW, you kind of think, maybe I'll just go and buy an actual BMW. The SUVs, especially the F-Pace, work better visually, and the I-Pace electric SUV is still an eye-catching car four years after its launch. But for whatever reason, it didn't work. Jaguar failed to convince enough customers out of their German premiums, and once again, the brand was carried by the success of Land Rover. Check this out. Analysts conservatively predicted the XC would sell 63,000 at its launch but it only managed to peak at 43,000 in 2016. The lesson we can take from this is that they moved quite slowly and delivered a product that people just didn't want. I actually remember there was a lot of debate back then about whether Jaguar should make an SUV because everyone else was doing that. And then when they finally did, the F-Pace, it was the big seller. It sold 72,000 in 2017, way more than the XE. The F-Pace helped them to achieve one of their biggest sales years in 2018 when they sold 180,000 cars. But it's been downhill ever since. Last year, they sold 86,000. 
So Jaguar needed another revolution. In 2020, former Renault executive Thierry Bellor took over from Ralph Spieth and the first thing he did was to say, look, we're not going to take on the German premiums anymore. That's clearly not working. We're going to copy Tesla. All right. So maybe he didn't say those exact words, not out loud anyway, but he might have been thinking it because as we heard last year, Jaguar will become all electric from 2025 and the current models, everything they make, including the I-Pace, will be left to end their days in a slow decline without direct replacements. Everything is going in the bin. Fresh start, yet another relaunch. So what do we know about the new electric Jaguars from 2025? Well, we know they're going to go upmarket, a long way upmarket. Jaguar's head of design, Jerry McGovern, said, we're going to make Jaguar wonderful again. And by the way, he's the guy who took over from Ian Callum and also the guy who does an amazing job with Land Rover. I mean, you might have strong views about whether Range Rovers need to exist in this world, but look out your window and tell me how many Range Rovers you see versus how many Jags are out there. People love them and they're good too. McGovern's vision is that Jaguar needs to recapture what made William Lyons' Jaguar great. Not looking back in a retro way, but channeling some of that magic to get the brand on top again. Last year, right after the announcement that Jaguar would go all electric, McGovern promised jaw-dropping designs that would be a copy of nothing. Forget about matching the model lineup from BMW, Audi and Mercedes. No, Jaguar is going to try to pinch customers off the likes of Porsche and Bentley. The brand will be lower volume, more exclusive and a true luxury experience. At least that's what they say. They're going to be more expensive too, obviously. You can expect new Jags to regularly break the £100,000 mark. And these new Jaguars will not share any underbody bits with Land Rover. In the past, they were going to use the MLA platform, which stands for Modular Longitudinal Architecture. And there was a plan for the new all-electric Jaguar XJ to use this platform, but they cancelled that plan because they realised the platform basically wasn't good enough. It was designed for both electric and combustion engines, which meant it was built partly for the past and not exclusively for the future. If they'd have continued with it, they'd have been playing catch up with companies that are already doing it properly and building dedicated electric platforms. So now Jaguar is creating its own platform, which they won't share with Land Rover. And this is a very expensive thing to do. So it's found someone to work with to help share the costs. A Canadian engineering group called Magna. And this platform has a cool name, Panthera. If you're wondering, yes, this is the name for the genus of big cats that includes Jaguars, lions, tigers, and leopards. So it kind of fits. Now, Jerry McGovern is very keen to have his say in this new platform. He's so keen, in fact, that he said he's designing the cars first and then creating the platforms to fit the designs. Normally, this happens the other way around because, as we said earlier, platforms are expensive. Remember, Jaguar spent £1.5 billion on the platform for the XC, which failed, so they lost that money. But this way, he gets to make the car exactly to his design, which bodes well. I'll tell you what using a bespoke platform also does. It allows JLR to sell Jaguar if it wants. Jerry creates a knockout design, Magna helps design a platform, and boom, you can sell Jaguar as a going concern or list it on a stock market, which seems to be a trendy thing to do these days. Look at the stories about Porsche, Lotus, and Polestar, etc. Could relaunch number four actually work? It's probably a bit like when you walk up the aisle with husband or wife number four. You're always gonna think, yeah, this is the one for life this time. And then there's always going to be that lingering doubt in the back of your mind that maybe, I don't know, maybe there'll be a number five. If there'll be a number five. Still, at least we can enjoy some new designs from Jerry. They better be good, mate. And cross our fingers that this one sticks. What do you guys think? They couldn't take on Mercedes and BMW, but can they take on Bentley and Porsche? Is this the right direction? Would you spend a hundred grand on a Jag? Let me know in the comments below.